All right, everybody, what's going on? It's Thundershot, and welcome back to more uh, Thundershot Q&A, Ask Thundershot, whatever. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, I have decided to cease doing Ask FM questions whenever I hit some kind of milestone, like this one would be for 30,000 subscribers, or I've done it for 20,000 and 25K and all that stuff. I have ceased doing uh, Ask FM specials for every time I hit a subscriber milestone, and instead I'm going to do an Ask FM just once a week. Now, I'm changing it up this time. Instead of being 15 minutes, this one's going to be a half hour long. By the way, I need to go ahead and set my... Uh, timer. There we go. This one's going to be a half hour long instead of 15 minutes. What I'm going to do instead, because I have 385 questions right now, and it, last time when I did this, I had roughly 200 questions. So I answered like 60 questions, and then a hunt, like 200 more people asked questions. So now I'm even more backed up than I was before. So I'm going to up it to a half hour. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I do, I just I have an Ask FM link to it. It'll be in the description below. If you log into it, you don't even need to make an account. However, if you want to, I'll kind of shout you out a little bit. And you can ask me questions about anything. But last time, I answered my questions all from the bottom. So these questions are all a month old. So what I'm going to do this time instead, I did a 15-minute segment last time. What I'm going to do this time instead is I'm going to do 15 minutes answering questions from the bottom. And then I'm going to stop that. And then I'm going to go to the top and then do 15 minutes from the top. This way, I'm getting people who just asked their questions recently and have asked questions uh, from a while ago. Let's just make sure I get to everyone a little bit quicker. Um, and a lot of people would say, well, Thundershot, what about the people in the middle? Don't they get boned? Eventually, the people in the middle will go to the bottom. So that's something you got to keep in mind. But without further ado, here we go. Let me know if you like the whole 30-minute setup. If you think 30 minutes is too long and it gets boring, maybe I should split it up. And on Tuesdays, I do the 15 minutes from the bottom. And then I post on Thursdays the 15 minutes I do from the top. Also, I've considered adding a face cam to this, but I'm not sure. It's a bit of work on my end. I don't know how I would do it exactly. But I've killed enough time. Let's get into this and answer some questions can do a Dead Island gameplay walkthrough. I played Dead Island. I didn't beat it. I didn't finish it. It was all right. I even had friends to play it with, and we just weren't really feeling it. I think the idea for Dead Island was really cool, but I think it wasn't very well executed. I found myself getting into glitches a lot in that game, uh, which wasn't fun. But like I said, I like the idea. Don't necessarily came for the, care for the gameplay, and I doubt you're going to get a Dead Island walkthrough from me anytime soon. That's not to say it'll never happen, but anytime soon, that is unlikely. Was Gohan Super Saiyan 2 when he fought Deborah? I believe so. Once you get to the Boo Saga, well, when Super Saiyan 3 is introduced, pretty much. And it's hard to tell if anyone is Super Saiyan 1 or 2, except for when Goku announces that he, this is Super Saiyan 1, this is Super Saiyan 2, and this is to go further beyond. It's hard to tell, but it's like if he was really fighting and he was really scared at all of Deborah, he would have been Super Saiyan 2. If not, he was Super Saiyan 1 and didn't see him as a threat. But he was having a harder time with the boar than he should have been, so he should have been Super Saiyan 2. But as we know, Adult Gohan Super Saiyan 2 wasn't as strong as Teen Gohan, so that says a little something. Super Saiyan 2 Gohan versus Super Saiyan 2 Majin Vegeta. Majin Vegeta, hands down. I think Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta without Majin still takes Gohan. Reason being, Gohan... Vegeta exclaims in the Buu Saga that Gohan, as an adult, is weaker than he was when he was a kid and fought Cell. Vegeta also says that Goku is now stronger than Goku than he was when he fought Cell. And Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta and Goku went at it pretty well, so that's why, that's my reasoning. Vegeta, according to Vegeta, which I don't think Vegeta is wrong on this, Adult Gohan is weaker than Teen Gohan. Also, according to Vegeta, Teen Gohan is weaker than Goku at the time, who Vegeta pretty well kept up with. Now granted, Goku did have Super Saiyan 3 in his pocket, but still... His Super Saiyan 2 form, even to Goku, did hold back a little bit. I think Majin Vegeta has that one pretty easily. What's your most recommended DBZ game? Well, it was Raging Blast 2. It might be Xenoverse in the future. But as of now, if you're going to pick one up, pick up Ultimate Tenkaichi if you have a PS2. Oh, God, no. What's wrong with me? Not Ultimate Tenkaichi. Don't pick up Ultimate Tenkaichi. Pick up Budokai Tenkaichi if you have a PS2. Or you can emulate it on the computer. But I really don't prefer that. That might just be me. Well, but Budokai Tenkaichi 3 if you have a PS2, just to clarify, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, or Raging Blast 2 if you have a 360 or PS3. Those are your two go-tos. -to go or wait for Xenoverse, because it's going to be amazing. But thank you, Robert Flynn, for the question. If I forget anybody's name, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Or tell me, Thundershot, you forgot to shout this guy out, because I mean to say everyone's name who bothers to sign up and leave their name there. I really do. But anyways, uh, repeat question. Is Yo Son Goku and his friends return the DBZ special canon to the manga or in any way a part of official history? 
Um, it's not canon to the manga necessarily. Black and Fist has a very good video up on this. If you want to check out his channel, it's one of his more recent videos called What is Canon in Dragon Ball Z? And he goes into really good in-depth explanation and he breaks it down. There is a manga canon, then there is an anime canon, what's official to the anime and all that stuff. And he breaks it down. Bottom line, Yosa and Goku and his friends return fits pretty well into anime canon for the most part, and it could have been manga canon, but obviously, if it's not in the manga, it's not manga canon. That's, I mean, for the most part, that's end of discussion. What's in the manga is manga canon, but it fits into how the anime works really, really well, because there's some movies that weren't anime canon, um, such as, like, Broly is really, really iffy, but probably not anime canon, and uh, a couple of the movies, like Cooler, that don't fit into the timeline at all. There's no way that Cooler makes any sense in any of his movies, so he's not anime canon. Just because there's no way it can make sense, there's no way it would work. But Yo Son Goku was seen to be worked on by Akira Toriyama, so it's highly possible that one is. But check out Black and Fist video. Uh, he does a really good job of explaining everything. Favorite DBZ movie? It might actually battle, be Battle of Gods, or Battle of Gods, excuse me, I get corrected on that all the time. Uh, I really liked it. I really, really liked being it. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's because I got to see it in theaters, but I don't know if it's old enough for me to judge it yet as my favorite movie. It might just be the new movie hype still on me, even though it's been two years. But it might just be the new movie hype still. So aside from that one, I, I like Bojack. I like Bojack Unbound because some other characters got to have their good their good fight scenes. But there we go. Joker versus Hercule. I answered that one in the last Ask FM. Was Battle of Gods? Was Battle of the Gods good? Yes, I loved it. Uh, I thought it was an okay movie when I saw the Japanese version with subtitles. Thought it was an amazing movie. Uh, when English subtitles came out, and I got to see it in movie theaters. I thought that that was absolutely amazing. thought the movie was awesome. I laughed. I thought the action was sweet, and I have already pre-ordered. Uh, no, no, I haven't. I'm going to pre-order very, very soon uh, Battle of God's Blu-ray, or Battle of God's Blu-ray, because I want that, and I want the extended cut, which I think is going to be awesome. Why did you sign up for this website? So I could answer you guys' questions. Thoughts on fandoms? I don't know what you mean exactly. Um, do you mean fandoms like different... I'm assuming you don't mean fandoms like fan-made, like DBZ stuff, for example. Do you mean fandoms like the Pokemon fan base? I don't, I don't fully understand what you mean. They're like Pokemon fan base, or is it like more of a closer like subdivision? Like, oh, these people like Broly, and these people like Yamcha, and whoever, whoever. You know what I mean? I'm not 100% sure what you mean. I think it's okay to like things, though. So that's cool. Just... Don't make it creepy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that one. I'm sorry. I watched it, and I loved it. What are your thoughts on DBZ Battle of Gods, or Battle of the Gods, by Devin LaBomb? Loved it. I pretty much summed it up before. I really love Battle of the Gods, especially in theaters. Uh, but I kind of summed that up already. But thank you, Devin. Do you think Gohan would have gone Super Saiyan 3 if Spopovich killed Videl in the World's Martial Art Tournament right before the Boo Saga? No. Uh, the reason being is he had gotten weaker since Super Saiyan 2. I think if Gohan had never stopped training, at, like if the Cell Saga ended and Gohan never stopped training, let's say Goku didn't die, right, and Goku kept training Gohan and they kept fighting together, and Piccolo was there, and Go basically if Gohan never ever ever stopped training, I really do think Gohan could have gone Super Saiyan 3. Now of course it would have been up to Akira to write that in or not, I mean who's to say, for sure. But I think Gohan would have gone Super Saiyan 3, and I think it would have been awesome. But no, because he was weaker, like, he just was able to go Super Saiyan 2, and he had gotten weaker than that since then. So no, I think Super Saiyan 3 was way out of the question. Despite how mad he may have gotten, I think Super Saiyan 3 was way out of the question. How do you think the Dragon Ball Saga would have continued if Vegito never defused? Well, that's interesting. They would have been inside Boo still, because Boo did eat him. But if they never defused, assuming that they were alive, the same way Goku and Vegeta were, I think they would have busted out of Boo with pretty much ease. They still fused together. It would have been easy for them. They would have busted out, and then they would have killed him. Because there's no way anybody could have held back Vegeta. Something to keep in mind, something that's really, really, really awesome, but not at the same time, because we never got to see it. Vegito, 100% had the power to be a Super Saiyan 3. And not just a, oh, I can turn Super Saiyan 3, but to be a very, very strong Super Saiyan 3. If you consider the fact that Goten and Trunks combined were able to be a very strong Super Saiyan 3 that could fight characters such as Super Buu and go blow to blow with them. And Goku, as a Super Saiyan 3, was able to was able to go Super Saiyan 3 by himself. Keep it... I'm getting ahead of myself. Goten and Trunks were Super Saiyans, but due to the fact that the Super Saiyan gene might have been a thing that existed... What did I do with my water? Oh, there it is. Due to the fact that the Super Saiyan gene might have been a thing that existed... 
excuse me, which made them go Super Saiyan easier than they should have. It's highly possible at their levels that Goten and Trunks wouldn't have been able to even fight Final Form Frieza, or 100% Frieza. They might have actually been weaker than Frieza, but they were at least probably around his power level, right? So when they fuse, they're, only, they're able to blow Super Saiyan 2 completely out of the water and go a strong Super Saiyan 3 that can keep up with Super Buu. And they're only able to go Super Saiyan 1. You take Vegeta, who had what I would call a strong Super Saiyan 2 because he had surpassed Team Gohan's power level at this point, right? And Goku, who could go all the way to 3, and granted he would have to lower himself down to Vegeta, but you take basically two strong Super Saiyan 2s, we'll call them, and you fuse them, Vegeta would have been able to go Super Saiyan 3 and like a, a heavy, heavy Super Saiyan 3, so there's nothing that could have held him down. I spent too long on that question, but I have not got to talk enough about how awesome Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta would have been. He could have done it. He didn't go Super Saiyan 3 because he didn't need to. He was kicking the crap out of Boo as Super Vegito. Like, easily kicking the crap out of Boo. So, he didn't even need to go Super Saiyan 3, but he totally fucking could have. The video that you upload of Gohan Mystic versus Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta on your YouTube page, and it's like a video game. How did you get that? Uh, I had the video game, and I recorded it with my HD PVR. I set up CPU versus CPU, and I let him go at it. I don't know. That's that's it. I mean, that's, that's what it boils down to. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. Did you notice that they kept referring Videl's child as a he? I did, Devin. I noticed that in the Japanese, I noticed that, uh, I noticed that in the movie, and like in the actual English version when I saw it in theaters, and it was a question to me. Part of me assumes, like, from, let's just look at this from the character's perspective, like, part of me assumes from the character's perspective, oh, they just call him a he because they're just, it, it's a baby, we're just gonna call it a he, because obviously Videl hadn't even told anyone yet, it was very, very new. They couldn't have known the sex this early, they couldn't have known the gender unless Dende could, like, feel if there was a penis on that baby or not when he healed, healed Videl. But there's no way, I don't think they knew. And from the character's perspective, that kind of makes sense. What doesn't make sense is from Akira's perspective. Because if Akira Toriyama is writing this, he knows. Like, unless he's just forgotten. <laughs> Akira's forgotten a lot of shit. Akira doesn't double check himself a lot of the time. But he knows that Videl has Pan in the future. Because Pan shows up at the end of Z, right? He, kn he knows that that's a thing, he knows that it has to be a thing, but he let the characters call them a he, and that's what doesn't make sense. Like, from the character's perspective, yeah. If they call him a he just because they don't know if it's a boy or a girl and it just slips out, hey, it's a he, that makes sense, I could see people doing that. But from the writer's perspective, I don't fully understand that, and that might mean that they're trying to go a different direction than GT. Uh, just to completely debunk GT, but then he would also have to erase the last episodes of DBZ, which I would be okay with. A lot of people wouldn't like that, but if, if you got rid of the last like episode or two of DBZ, like right after Goku blows up Kid Buu with the spirit bomb and that saga ends, I would be okay with that, but that might just be me. I don't know. I, wanna, I don't want to get too into that, but thank you for the question, Devin. Super 17 versus Super Perfect Cell. Who, who would win Super 17? I understand Super 17 wasn't... Uh, the only reason Super 17 was able to even compete with... Super Saiyan 4 Goku is because Goku was really stupid for some reason and kept giving him key blasts. Like, he kept shooting key blasts at him when he should have known damn well that he was going to absorb those, or that he was absorbing those. Um, so Super 17 wasn't, I don't think he was nearly as strong as Super Saiyan 4 Goku. He was just able to stay in the fight by taking his energy. But I still think Super 17 has that fight. I think Super 17 and Super Saiyan 3 Goku would have put up a good fight. And by default, I mean, you know, Super Saiyan 3 Goku is kicking the crap out of Super Perfect Cell, so... Why do you dislike Pan and GT? She's annoying. Oh my god, is she annoying? She's like a little mini Chi Chi. She's not. She's not as bad as Chi Chi, but she's. Anytime she's there, she just screws something up. She screws everything up. I think she helped. Like for real, she helped. Like maybe. Don't count sometimes when like she tripped over a Dragon Ball and something stupid happened and she found a Dragon Ball. Don't count those. Count the one time when he was fighting the uh, the Water Shadow Dragon. I forget its name, but he was fighting the Water Shadow Dragon, and she threw out her first Kamehameha wave. That's like the only time she helped. Every other time she's being annoying or she's fucking shit up, and those are the only things Pan does, and I hate her. <laughs> I hate Pan. Have you ever thought of playing a scary game like Outlast or something for YouTube? I actually get this question a lot in my Twitch live streams, and for those of you guys who watch my playthroughs on YouTube of my games and stuff that I do, I would like to play a scary game. The problem is that in order to play a scary game, I would need a second computer monitor because I would probably like to play it on PC just for the sake of it. But I would need a second computer monitor so I could set up a webcam and stream while I did the scary game. And then I would need a webcam to put on the computer monitor, which I don't have. And in order to get another computer monitor, I would need a bigger table. And in order to get a bigger, well, I could get a bigger table, but if I got a bigger table, I would need more room. And to get more room, I would probably need to switch apartments because the one I'm in is pretty packed on space right now. 
So bottom line, if I move apartments and get a webcam and get a bigger table and get a second monitor, it's possible. Scary game is not out of the question, but I'm a little ways off from that. Okay, I'm running out of time. I'm going to do uh, three or so more questions, and then I'm going to switch to the top, so that way we can get some new questions in here, because I still haven't caught up. There's still questions from a month ago. I'm so behind. I'm so sorry, everyone, that it's taken me this long to answer these, but I have a lot to get to, so here we go. Don't you think it would be really cool if Piccolo had a son? It would be neat, but it would just be another Piccolo, you know what I mean? Like, maybe if Piccolo gets old and he's about to die, and everyone's like, oh no, Piccolo's dying, and Piccolo just, I mean, you know, throws up another baby Piccolo that would come out like him, but then again, it wouldn't come out exactly like him, because look at the difference between King Piccolo and Piccolo Piccolo. You know, I don't think in a million years King Piccolo would have willingly teamed up with Goku, like Piccolo did with Raditz, you know what I mean? But then again, they never had competition like Raditz, as weird as that is to say. But... I think it would be interesting. I do think it would be interesting, but I think that's something he would do like right before he died. It's like, it's okay, I'll carry on my legacy with this egg vomit, and then he'd throw up himself because they reproduce asexually. I can make your penis fat. Thank you. I just missed somebody's name. I'm so sorry whoever's name I missed, but shout-outs to you. I'm like 99% sure I didn't say your name, but I'm sorry. Anyways, I can make your penis fat. Neat. Good question. Uh, do you also love Dragon Ball Evolution? Oh, Tyler. Tyler, get out of here. I'm throwing up. <laughs> I'm throw Sorry, Tyler, but good... No, bad question. Awful question. Who do you like better, Quame or Black and Fist? If they're both drowning, um, they're both drowning. I can only save one. I think, like, I can only have enough time to reach my arm out to save one. I think I'm using my arm to grab one of them, and I'm like whipping my dong over the side of the boat for the other one to grab onto. So I don't know which one's getting the dong. I'm just reaching out for it. And then they're gonna grab it. I'll pull them up to safety. But that's my answer. They're both getting saved. What if Goku and Gohan joined Raditz? Okay, I've gone way over time. What if Goku and Gohan joined Raditz? This is a question that's been asked on Quaman's Ask FM. This is a question I believe has been asked on my F Ask FM. I think it's even been asked and answered on Black and Fist Ask FM, but I've answered that one enough. It would take me way too long to explain it, so I'm sorry. I'm kind of ignoring this one, but this one has been answered on multiple videos that we've done like this. So, without further ado, let me refresh the page, and we're going to get to the top here. And just so that way we give a chance for people who've newly asked questions. Oh, it shot me back to the bottom. That way, we get a chance for people who have newly asked questions to get stuff taken care of. All right. Gohan versus Piccolo at basketball. <clears throat> First of all, it depends on what stage they're in, because obviously Ultimate Gohan's going to be so vastly superior to Piccolo, there's nothing he can do. But uh, let's give him the benefit. Let's say they're both at around the same power level. I would have to give that to Piccolo, because Piccolo can just stretch his arms and dunk it and block it and shit on Gohan every time. If they have about the same power level, Piccolo wins due to his awesome arm-stretching ability that everyone, including Piccolo, forgets about. So there's that. Oolong versus Puar at chess. Oh, God. Eh, Puar. 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 Sorry. When do you think North America will get the Boo arc of DBZ Kai? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be completely honest here. I do not pay a lot of attention to D DBZ Kai. I know it sticks closer to the manga, but and some of the voice acting is actually pretty superb in it, but I don't care for others of it. I don't like how Kid Gohan sounds exactly like a woman, because I think a woman voices him. And I get that a woman voiced him in the original dub also, but she did a better job, I think. I don't know. A couple voices they do really well, some not so much. I don't like New Bulma. I didn't like New Bulma in Battle of the Gods very much, but... I don't know. I, d I don't pay attention to Kai. I have the original, and if I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch the original. I prefer the blood. I prefer, I mean, you know, it actually showing things that happen. I, I can't say I prefer most of the filler, but uh, I watched the original. I haven't really watched much Kai at all. So I don't know. If there's a Super Saiyan God, do you think a Super Namek or a God, do you think that it's a good idea? Wait, hold on. If there is a Super Saiyan God, do you think a Super Namek God or a God, do you think it is a good idea? Are they... Technically, the Namekians are kind of already gods, at least with, like, Guardian of the Earth. Like, Kami means god, right? I've, I've had this with... I've asked Kwame in these questions just to give him a hard time, but I'm like... I'm like, Goku's a god, right? Super Saiyan god. He's like, well, yeah. He's like, so Goku's officially a god. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, so if Goku's a god, what is Kami? And well, Kami technically translated means god. Kami's, Kami's god. And I'm like, okay, well, then uh, King Kai. What is King Kai? Well, King Kai, they're kind of gods of... <laughs> I don't know, it's funny, there's a, there's a lot of god talk going around. But technically, Kami is a god, so that's kind of a Namek god. It's just way shittier than a Super Saiyan god. But if there was a Namekian god when five asexual Namekians held, hand, held hands and they were pure of heart, it'd be kind of cool. I don't know how strong it would be, I don't know if it would be... I don't know what would happen, that's weird. I doubt it, but it's an idea, it's an idea. 
Why did your Chiefs beat my Dolphins this season? Uh, Kansas City is better than Miami? That's. I'm sorry. This question comes from Quaman. And I'm sorry. I'm almost sorry my Chiefs beat your Dolphins this season. But I guess it's just because the Dolphins really suck. Because the Chiefs aren't good so far. They're 2-1 right now. And the one win is thanks to your Dolphins. But I'm, my guess is just the Dolphins suck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, Quaman. If you had to be with one person for the rest of your life, who would it be a why? Do I have to pick a person? I hate these questions. I mean, it would probably be Nicole because she's in the other room and I've been with her for a while now. But I don't know. I don't. I don't like these questions. <laughs> but thank you, anyways. Don't get me wrong. I get where you're coming from. What if Frieza or King Vegeta were brought back by the Dragon Balls by Goku, so Goku could ask him what he knew about Bill's Beerus? I think that would be dumb because they're. I'm not gonna call them friends with Beerus, but they're pretty. They know Beerus pretty well. And if Beerus or Whis sees them fucking around bringing Frieza back just to find out information, Whis is gonna have them there in 20 minutes, and Beerus is just gonna blow up the planet. So there's nothing anybody can do to stop him. So I highly, highly doubt that's the case. And I doubt King Vegeta or Frieza knows a lot about Beerus. I mean, even if they talked before, how much information did they really get out of Beerus? He seems like a pretty straightforward guy. You know what I mean? What color wear? What color underwear do you wear? Uh, it depends on the day. If I use my old email to sign up for the Xenoverse beta, what happens if I change it before they send an email to me? You might be screwed. I really have no experience with that. You might want to call Sony or the people running the beta. I'm not sure. Sony might be the place to go to for that or maybe the email company you have hooked up with, but I don't know. I have zero experience with that and I'm sorry. What is the difference between an alpha and a beta? Okay, so I've been uploading a lot of Xenoverse gameplay lately and uh, We've been saying beta, but really what it felt like when we were playing was an alpha. And the difference between an alpha and, a, and the beta is not a lot, but you could tell we were in an alpha because of how little we got in the Xenoverse beta and the fact that all these glitches were still happening. In the, If you have a beta of a game, right, a beta is supposed to be literally the step before the final finished product. So in the beta, you can expect things like, uh, I'll give you guys the Battlefield 4 beta, for example, when I played that. There is a huge building in the middle of the map. The game worked fine almost all the way around. Now, there was only a couple maps because they're just showing you. They have the rest of the game, like, hidden off somewhere. But there are only a couple maps you could play on. But there was a big, tall building in the middle. And if you blew the building up, what it was supposed to do was look super awesome and crumble down and fall away. And it was supposed to look amazing. But what really happened is you basically saw, like, this big screen kind of, like, glitch out while the building fell. Like, it just kind of got really pixelated until the building fell. And then it would show you collapsed building. And I think the beta is supposed to be kind of like that. The beta is supposed to get the job done, uh, maybe with a couple hiccups here and there, maybe a lag here and there. Um, but the beta is supposed to be the step before the final product, and that's not what we got with the Xenoverse. What we got was an alpha. This is like pre very, very early stages. They still have a bit of work before this game is ready to get ready to be released to the public. So that's kind of the difference. Alpha's like, alpha's kind of like the rough draft. We've made the rough draft of the game. This is kind of how it's supposed to play. You're going to run into glitches and stuff like that. We're working on fixing those. You're not getting like a fourth of the game. We're working on fixing all that. Beta's like, look, here's a couple maps and previews of what the final game is supposed to look like. If you find anything wrong with it, let us know because we think we've got most of this stuff cleaned up. And then final product is supposed to be... I mean, you're not supposed to find glitches in the final product, but it happens. You know what I mean? But that's kind of my rough explanation. I probably did a really bad job of that. Hi, 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 hi. Hey, I'm your biggest fan. I was wandering. Are you gay? Uh, no. But, good question, I guess. I I, want, I wander sometimes, too. Not if I'm gay, I just wander. Ginyu Force versus Android 16, 17, and 18. Android 16, 17, and 18. I think they would be too quick, and unless Captain Ginyu really, really, really caught them off guard, uh, then there is... Unless Captain Ginyu really, really, really caught them off guard, and he would have had to have caught 16 off guard. I don't even think... Can he change bodies with an Android? That's a good question. Technically, they're cyborgs. They were called androids the entire series, but technically they were cyborgs, so maybe. But I doubt it. Even if he could, he would ca he would have to catch 16 off guard because apparently 16 was the strongest of all of them, despite 17 being stronger than 18. 16 was supposed to be the strongest of all of them because uh, he could keep he could fight second form cell or whatever it was. But I androids win that unless Captain Ginyu pulls off a really really crazy body switch with 16, which might not even be possible because they're cyborgs. Do you plan on watching Gurren Lagann? Don't even know what that is, but... Well, I kind of. I've heard a lot about it, but not in the near future. I think if I'm going to watch another anime soon, it's probably going to be Fairy Tale or Helsing Ultimate, because those both look really cool to me. 
I'm just waiting for more Attack on Titan, man. Please give me more Attack on Titan. In DBZ Battle of Z, how do I get it to where you can just pick anyone and fight anyone without being online or playing story mode? Like in the past with Raging Blast 2, you could pick any fighters to fight each other. That was the most fun to me. Does this game have that option? Or should I just go buy Raging Blast 2? You should just go buy Raging Blast 2. This is actually the reason for a while I discontinued the Dragon Ball Z fight series is because I did a whole road of Battle of Z with the Dragon Ball Z fight series. Because when Battle of Z came out, I was supposed to pick up the fight series on Battle of Z. The problem was is that you can't pick fights like that. You just can't do it without being online, and it's really, really stupid. But thank you. Uh, get out of here, Vast. Nobody likes you. But thank you, Tillman Lee Todd Turley, for the question. And yeah, it sucks, and that's just Battle of Z for you. But you should just go buy Raging West, too. And DBZ Battle of Z, how do you get the same question over again? What if Goku can control his great ape form? And he kind of does in GT, but nobody counts that. And he couldn't until his tail got cut off, so I guess I don't know what you're asking. Like, in the beginning, if he could control it? I don't know. I mean, that might change a lot of fights in Dragon Ball and stuff, but that's just too many what-ifs to go off of if we're starting from the very beginning of Dragon Ball, so. Are you excited for Xenoverse? Yes, Mr. Proto Man. 145, I am indeed excited for Xenoverse. Why didn't you dodge? Good question. I guess it was a question, but he had a bunch of exclamation points, so. Can Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta GT bust the galaxy, or maybe half a galaxy? Probably. I mean, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan was able to put a Kamehameha wave up that could blow up the entire planet. 3 is notably stronger than that. 4 with the fusion of Gogeta? A whole galaxy? Meh. I'm saying half a galaxy or less. Half a galaxy or less, final answer. Super Saiyan 2 Gohans can throw up stuff that can blow up the entire planet. I guess Vegeta claims he could have blown up the entire planet in the Saiyan Saga 2, which I don't know if I believe. Because like if you even if you think about it, Freeze's bomb still took a while to blow up Namek. So I don't know. Like I get the feeling Android like 17 didn't have the power, didn't possess the power to make a key blast that could blow up the whole earth if you wanted to. I might be wrong on that, but I, I just get the feeling that that was the case. Like 16 was straight up gonna blow himself up, and he was sure that him blowing himself up would have been enough to kill second form Cell, and clearly he wasn't worried about the planet exploding, you know what I mean? So I think at Super Saiyan 2 they were legitimately able to blow up planets when they felt like it. Super Saiyan 3, the multiplier from 0 to Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan 2, it decreases over time. So Super Saiyan 3, I think, could get, I mean, you know, a little bit bigger than a planet, obviously. Super Saiyan 4, fused with Gogeta, maybe half maybe half a galaxy if they're lucky. What is What non-canon event would you make canon if you had to choose, and how would it affect the series? Oh, mm, I never thought about that. Because typically, I don't know. That's a good one. Broly dying. Whenever Broly actually died for real, that's that's the only one I would make canon. That's the only time Broly would show up and then just die and then just be dead forever and nobody's gonna wish him back. That would be <laughs> that would be the one that I would make. But thank you, Johnny, for the question. It would affect the series because Broly's dead forever. Fuck him. Hey, add me on Skype. No, sorry, I don't. I don't add uh, subscribers. On Skype, it's just a thing I have. My Skype is mainly used for business, uh, for the most part, so that's not going to happen. Thank you, Marmite, for uh, saying that, but I just I don't add subscribers on Skype. There's plenty of ways to contact me. I have Twitter. You can YouTube message me, although YouTube messaging me isn't the best way. I have Twitter. I have Facebook. I have the AskFM account. Uh, there's plenty of ways you can get in contact with me. Uh, don't forget the YouTube comment section. My God, the YouTube comment section. Uh, over on my Twitch. If you show up on my Twitch, I take questions. You know what I mean? So it's just, Skype's just not the way to do that. There's plenty of other ways to get in contact with me. Why do people keep talking about Evil Goku in the movie? Evil Goku is an AF character, so how do people assume that he will be in the movie? I mean, there hasn't been a GT character in DBZ, let alone AF. I doubt that Toriyama has ever heard of. Good question. Good question. I made a video kind of talking about this, uh, where I basically, the picture is of Super Saiyan 4 Broly, but I basically just talk about how all that stuff is rumored and really 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 unlikely to happen as far as the new movie goes but very good question uh, I wonder that myself sometimes Thundershot if you were in Super Saiyan 4 form what would would oh if Goku were in Super Saiyan 4 form would he be able to beat Super Sonic or at least hold him off I believe so 
I think screw attacks um, I think screw attacks video that they had in shadow versus Vegito was wrong because what they did in that, which I didn't like, is Shadow it, Shadow could have beaten Vegeta from the way it looked. Shadow could have taken down Vegeta in his Super Saiyan form. Uh, and he was going to, but what Vegeta did was try to blow up the planet, and then Shadow went to go save it. And why I was so confused with that is they're both anti-heroes, right? They're both good guys now. Like, even at the point whenever Screw Attack did this fight, they are both good guys. So... Why would Vegeta be the one trying to blow up the planet, and why would Shadow give enough of a shit to save it? You could easily have flipped those roles if you wanted to, and when Vegeta was winning, Shadow could have tried to destroy the planet, and then Vegeta went to go save it, Shadow goes Super Shadow and beats the shit out of You know what I mean? That could have gone either way, so I don't, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that a Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, with the way that they made the fight go, I don't like the fact that the Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta won that fight, because Shadow was saving the Earth the whole fight when he was in Super form. However... I think Super Saiyan 4, yeah, I think that's enough of a power level increase that basically Shadow can hit him only once, uh, I think Goku would be able to hold him off. And all Goku has to do is outlast outlast the beatdown from Super Sonic, and then he blows his head off in one go pretty much. But yeah, I got enough time for one or two more questions here, so let's have a look. King Cold versus Final Form Android 19. Damn. Final Form Android 19. Final answer. Because... Oh, I read that wrong. And that Android 19. Fuck. Oh, that is That's good. That's really good actually. Cuz we we didn't get a whole lot from King Cold, but we knew he wasn't as strong as a Super Saiyan, and it can obviously Android 19 is not as strong as a Super Saiyan. I'm almost tempted to say King Cold, but that's a really really good question. I don't know if I have an answer for you. Um not one that would take any shorter than 2 or 3 minutes, which I don't have time for. So let's get one more answer here because this dude left his name. James Coletta, how can I record my game screen sessions on my PS3 like you have in the past? Game screen sessions? I have XSplit right now. XSplit is what I use. Um, you have to pay like $15 for three months and you get a three month license to go ahead and use XSplit and do all the fun stuff with that. But you can record your screen in high quality. That's for computer games, for my actual uh, live streaming and recording games off my PlayStation or PlayStations. I have a Hophog HD PVR, which I'm upgrading to the HD PVR 2 right now, so hopefully better quality comes to you guys in the future, but that's how you do it. You have an HD PVR 2, you set it up, you can record from your PlayStation, uh, or, play, or Wii U, or anything like that. Not a PS4, though, they don't work with Next Gen, which is why I'm upgrading now. But, that's going to do it. Thank you, James, for the question. That's going to wrap it up for me this time. Guys, I want to thank everyone for coming out. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if I should split these up in the future. I know this one went a little bit longer than 30 minutes. But let me know if I should split these up into two 15-minute parts and do one Tuesday and one Thursday. Or, like, does it get too boring in 30-minute whole segments? Um, I'm leaving off with 333 questions left. But that's going to wrap, wrap it up for me. Let me know what you guys think. My Ask FM is in the description below if you guys want to ask me questions. I do this thing every Tuesday, possibly every Tuesday and Thursday, depending on feedback from this. But thanks for coming out. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video. I'm Thundershot. Ask me questions with the, or with the link in the description below. And I'm out. Peace, guys.